So we're going to change gears a little bit, and we're going to take a few minutes and talk about network security. Now, to be honest, network security is an entire subgenre of IT in and of itself. Like, network engineers are different than programmers are different from network architects are different from telephony people are different from network security folks. And as I've been saying, and you're probably sick of hearing it by this point, this is the CCENT, and we're not going to get a whole lot of exposure to network security in this course. But it is on the exam, at least the little bit we're going to go over here. And so as a result, it's in the video here. Now, a good network engineer will keep security in mind when he's designing his network. Again, even though we may not be security experts or security analysts or may not be responsible for all of the data security on the network, we still need to keep it in mind because in reality, network security is kind of a balancing act. As an example, if I were to take my laptop and power it off and shove it in a drawer and lock it, I could say there, my laptop is 100% secure. It is completely closed off from everything. No viruses can get on it, no spyware, no malware, nothing can get on it. However, it's just a big, heavy paperweight at this point. I really can't use the laptop for much of anything because it's completely isolated. In much the same vein, you can completely isolate your network from any clients, from the internet, from anything outside your walls or outside your direct control. But, you know, that's not really workable as a functioning network. I mean, we have email, we have streaming video, we have business-to-business -business VPN connections, we have client VPNs, remote workers, teleworkers. And locking down the network completely is just not a good method of securing your network. Conversely, you can't leave everything completely open either. You can't just say, well, there's no point in dealing with passwords. There's no point in dealing with proxy servers or filters or virus scanning. You know, that just slows down the network. Let anyone do anything they want. You do that and you're probably certifiably insane because your network will not be worth anything in about two weeks once everyone discovers that, hey, I can go out to whatever website I want and download whatever I want and put it on my computer and I have admin access to Active Directory and everything on the network and you just won't have anything anymore. So it's important to keep security in mind, but realize you have to walk that fine line between usability and security. You can't make the network so secure that your users can't get their job done because they're constantly having to type in passwords and, oh, well, I can't actually get to the internet on this computer. I have to go over to that computer over there and download my files and put them on a floppy disk or a CD or a thumb drive and bring them over to this computer. You can't lock it down that far, but you can't go the other direction either. Now, I know some of you, especially if you're just starting out in networking and you're dealing with a small company, you may be thinking, why would anyone even attack my network? I'm not some Fortune 500 company. I don't deal with nuclear launch codes or anything like that. Why would anyone really care? Well, there are several reasons for external attacks. The first is corporate espionage. Even though you may not be a huge corporation, you may fit in a niche that deals with some pretty sensitive information that doesn't really need to get out. For example, the company that I currently work for has about 600 employees. So again, we're a good mid-sized business. We're not a Fortune 500 company by any stretch, but we deal with protected health information on a daily basis as part of our business model. And so therefore, if someone's going to attack our network for corporate espionage, if they were able to crack into our network, they would get access to a wealth of information that they could use to poach our customers away from us or just perpetrate some kind of scam against our customers or our clients. So that's the big reason for external attacks. Another one is a denial of service. You know, I'm not going to take your information, but I'm just going to make it where you can't do business. And therefore, if you're not doing business, you're not making money and you'll go out of business. Admittedly, the denial of service or the distributed denial of service or the DDoS attack is kind of the new hot thing here lately with all the anonymous and the script kitties out there. You know, let's just get 50 million computers and point them at this network and just turn them loose and we'll just deny service to everybody running out of that same data center and no one will get any work done. Another reason for external attacks is not really an attack, but information harvesting or to run a botnet using the computers on your network. And again, you can harvest names and passwords and confidential information that happens to flow through the computer. Well, you can just run a botnet and churn out spam or anything else like that. And what I consider to be the lamest reason for external attacks, but is probably a lot more prevalent than a lot of people would realize, is because I can't. Well, why did you do that? Well, because I can. It's kind of like talking to my kids. Why did you do that to the dog? Well, I shaved him because I could do it, <laughs> because he was there. They're not after any corporate information. They're not really wanting to deny you service. They just went and defaced your website because it was there and they felt like it. 
Now, external attacks are not the only method of attack on a network. There are other methods of attacking a network. And honestly, more attacks on a network takes place from inside, whether it's purposely or not. And some of the things to look out for on the inside of your network is infected devices being brought in. And as the BYOD, or the bring your own device phenomena, gets more steam, and people are bringing their own laptops and cell phones and whatnot onto your network and expecting to use them, you know, they may not have up-to-date virus definitions. They may not have up-to-date spyware definitions. They may not be running antivirus at all. And if you don't have a policy in place to check those machines before allowing them onto your network, they could be bringing in anything onto your network. And that's where a lot of these internal attacks come from. The next is toolbars and freeware. Hey, I want the little Bonzi Buddy. That was popular about 15 years ago. I want Bonzi Buddy or I want Weatherbug. And I'm just going to download, hey, it's free cursors, it's free screensavers. I'm going to download it onto my computer. Now I'm part of a botnet. Now I have a virus. Now I have a keylogger, so on and so forth. In fact, an interesting anecdote that I read involved a company that was doing penetration testing at a credit union. And what they did is they took several USB thumb drives, and with the company's permission, of course, they put a key logger and a little phone home application on these thumb drives and set it to auto run whenever it was inserted and just left it laying out in the parking lot. And they said you were surprised at how many people picked up those thumb drives, took them into the building, and just plugged them into their corporate computer. Oh, look, a free thumb drive. I wonder what's on it. Plug it in there. Now you're infected. And last but not least, you can't rule out disgruntled employees. You know, this entire department is being laid off, so you know what? I'm just going to go in, and I'm just going to erase all the routers and reload them and take the entire network down on my way out the door. Now, hopefully, most people are mature enough to not do that, but there have been a few cases. There was a network administrator in San Diego a few years back that he built the network. He was getting ready to get laid off, so he just took all the passwords with him and wouldn't give them to anyone. To be honest, people like that really irritate me. They give the good network engineers and the good network administrators a bad name because of the actions of a few rogue agents, if you will. But those are some of the more common attack vectors, and as we discuss network security, we'll discuss some ways to mitigate these attack vectors. But for now, this concludes our overview of network security.